I need to make like a, a video before I make the video to get out all of my rambles and then I become a little bit more succinct. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another Friday Faves and Fails. I know, last week I not only completely missed this video but any upload at all, it's just been absolutely manic with actual work, um, my kind of side business which is the candles, wax melt, concrete, um, smoke and matches shop that we have online, we did a market stall. The whole thing was just kind of a little bit crazy and then this week I've been reorganising after the madness of last week and I'm filming this at 11 o'clock on Thursday night. Last week, or last week, the week before, the last one of these I think I filmed at like five o'clock in the morning so um, I don't think I can film at a normal time anymore. So before we get into it because I'm gonna forget and someone's gonna ask, what I have on my eyes is the Too Faced, oh, falling apart. Uh, the Too Faced Better Than Chocolate palette. I bought this while we were in Las Vegas. I got it from one of those cosmetic company outlets. It was an amazing deal. It was like five items for, I want to say it was five items for $50, six items for $60, something like that. Um, and Ella, my daughter and I kind of split it and I got two things and she got four because there was more stuff that she wanted. But this I got for $10. $10, which is crazy. Um, the the colours are they're kind of like medium deep. They're, they're mostly neutral, but like medium deep. So it's not necessarily a palette that I feel like I can do a whole look in because the one super pale colour is this really shimmery white, which is not entirely my vibe. I did a little bit of that in the corner, um, but then I kind of mixed it with something else. And then the dark, dark colour is like this one, but again, not really dark enough for it to be like a full on liner shade. So I also used the, um, I'll show you which one I used, the Too Faced Natural Eyes, which I've many times told you, I think this is like my all time favorite eyeshadow palette. This is like, if I only had one, if I could only have one, it would be this one. I love it. Absolute, absolute creme de la creme. Too Faced have just got some of the most amazing, blendable eyeshadows that are just really, really easy to work with. Anyway, this is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Uh, because it was so late at night, because I finished work late, I do work an occasional and every other week, uh, super late Thursday, I thought, well, I'm going to have some fun with my makeup because I'm not going anywhere. It's not like, mm, I kind of got to <laughs> kind of got to go with like whatever I wear out. No, it's just going to come off my face in like an hour's time when I go to bed. So why not play? And I really quite like it. I really need to kind of take some time to sit and have some fun with makeup because the only time that I'm putting it on, it's either to film which is rare these days to be fair, uh, or to go out and do something. And I wanna always rely on things that I know work and last if I'm going up to an event. If I'm doing kind of day-to-day -day stuff, I want really natural, like my actual face makeup. And um, for YouTube, it's probably pretty much the same as that. So I maybe do need to kind of really set aside some time to play because, um, well, we're gonna get into, I'm gonna film a video probably for next week, uh, where I get into some stuff that I've been watching recently. And Charlotte Holdcroft made the most amazing video this week about makeup burnout, and I could not have identified more with it. And she was talking about um, how it becomes kind of a job and when a hobby starts to feel like work, which I've said this before, um, when a hobby feels like work, it's it's not fun anymore. I I have absolutely felt that way, and I've said that, but something about the way that she framed it. And I think because I've not really heard other creators in the beauty space talk about it from their perspective. We're usually speaking to an audience of people who don't make videos, where she was like, I felt like she was speaking to me. Um, and she said that in the video, like that she takes time and plays around. And I thought, yeah, I probably need to do that. And I think that's probably what inspired me to do something a little bit bolder today. Um, anyway, that's what I've got in my eyes. Mom, this is gonna be a long video. And what else might you ask about? Probably lips. This, I've been trying to find in my collection, because lip, lip liner, I feel like is the thing that I probably buy most. Lip stuff and cheek stuff are my like most tempting things. Like they're the things that when something comes out, I'm like, ooh, like Kylie Jenner just brought out this new like sheer lip thing. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna... super tempted. Um, but a neutral, the perfect neutral lip liner for me 
that's not kind of like dead looking, but not too pink. Like today I've got a really warm, kind of bronzy eye look. And so most of the lip liners that I will wear, most of my like neutral nudes are quite pink, um, maybe a peach, but they just kind of looked wrong with this. And this is Subculture from MAC, which I struggle to wear because it's so dry. I don't know if you guys have experienced this as well with some MAC liners. They last a really long time because of that. I find, um, I've got a red one, I think it's cherry. And oh my God, of, of all the red lip liners, it's just like the most sharp, precise lip line you're ever gonna get. But it's very dry. So with a nude, I really feel, because I like to wear a lip liner on its own quite often, I really feel like I need, because otherwise it's gonna look dry and not nice. I need it to be kind of a little creamier. So I put this on over the top of foundation, which I don't usually do, but I did a full face of foundation today over the lips. And then I did this over the top and it kind of gave, gave it like a bit of a creamy base. Um, anyway, that's by the by. This is over the top of my foundation. So bear that in mind, I really like the tone. I think that it goes really nicely for my my kind of skin tone, which the closest thing I could tell you is Calico from number seven, because that is spot on. Um, I love it. Can I swatch it? I mean, it's not giving you much, is it? Oh, here we go. Do you know as well, I think maybe it's always dry because I don't use it that much. I freshly sharpened it before I used it today and maybe that helped, but it is, it's not too much of anything and it is neutral everything on the side of one. Anyway, that's what I'm wearing today. Um, was there anything else that I wanted to talk about before we get into it? I don't think so. No, let's start with my one and only fail. And this is one that I've been meaning to mention um, and I was kind of going through my collection today. I had a big clear out of my office. I'm really happy with it now. The space feels really kind of clean and organized for the first time in forever. I had a mad nightmare last night. <laughs> I'll tell you about it in a vlog. But I had a mad nightmare last night. And um, when I looked it up, like, what does this mean? It was like overwhelmed by your environment. And um, I thought, yeah, that's probably just about right. So I took the day, really sorted out the office. I kind of built some new furniture. I've got like a different situation going on back here. I really feel good about it. I don't feel like I had enough space for the stuff that I had. Nothing had a home and it was all kind of like shoved into different corners and now could not have more furniture and more storage in this room and it just feeling really, really good about it. Anyway, while I was going through stuff, I found this. And I thought, I'm gonna try it out again. And I wore it a little bit today. I thought, yeah, I still, I just don't get it. My friend Alana, um, she sent me a box full of things that just weren't for her, but maybe they were gonna be for me. And this was one of them. Um, it's the Charlotte Tilbury, it's called Tinted Love. The shade is Santa Euphoria. Completely should be right up my street. It, in theory, is like a sheer lip situation, which, yes, that's totally my thing. Like, you would think this would be totally, totally my vibe. So the first thing that tipped me off that I might not like this was this. You see the colour of the actual product there. And then you see that the the applicator is obviously like a deep red colour. I have seen this before. Also the, the smell, the smell is really familiar. The deep red applicator is to me exactly the same as the YSL lip tint. If you've never used this before, it was, or a lip stain, sorry, it was really popular probably 10 years ago. Um, there were a million different kinds. Uh, they did like vinyl ones, they did matte ones. It was kind of like the um, the new version of like a lip coat, which I think lip coat is still a thing, um, but something where you would put it on and it would just kind of, it was supposed to be like a glossy stain, I think it was called. It was supposed to give you like a permanently glossy looking lip, but it was like um, like a liquid lip, but it, it, it with a shine. It was very unusual at the time. So I was absolutely obsessed with these. I had all of them practically, and they were expensive. They were like 25 pounds plus each. I bought loads of them. I was really, really into them. Um, I honestly don't know what the appeal was now because <laughs> they really weren't that great. Like they were, they were quite drying. Um, they, they didn't look fantastic. I was just obsessed, obsessed. I had probably 10. So expensive, it's madness. Um, 
I also had like the L'Oreal dupes. It was just, it was a moment in time. So I remember that the applicators of those did exactly the same thing as this, that kind of deep red stain. And I'm thinking like, well, uh, that's not a great sign because that's very reminiscent. And it totally is, it's a similar kind of product. It's like, you can see here, what was initially kind of like a, a nice sheer whatever. If I tap on it, you can see how it's kind of set. I'm not gonna smear it around because I haven't left it long enough. But it kind of has that, that same vibe. And I don't honestly know what the purpose, as I'm kind of smudging it, I think it is a stain. I think it is supposed to be a stain. It's sticky. I don't know how it was marketed because like I say, Alana sent this to me. I'd never seen anything about it. But I basically think it's the same product because it's, all of the characteristics are there. Okay, this has been discontinued. <laughs> which that makes a lot of sense. But the craziest part is it's supposed to have been a lip and cheek stain. Lip and cheek stain, that's crazy. That is crazy. Reading about it, it is 100%, it's exactly the same as the YSL. Um, and I can totally see why. Totally see why it was discontinued. I'm gonna have to look up some reviews because I need to know if other people enjoyed this. It doesn't, it doesn't, even I'm looking at a video on their website of a model applying this and you can see how patchy it is. It just was not a good product. Okay, let's move on since you can't even buy that anyway. Um, so I do have a PR sample that I was sent this week or maybe two weeks ago now. Um, but I have to mention it because I can't, I, it's absolutely amazing. It's the Hydro Maniac Blush Glow Hydrator. Like I said, I'm obsessed with anything um, cheek or lip. These are so good, so good. I've, I've enjoyed each of these. I've barely been wearing makeup, but if I'm putting on any makeup at all, I am also wearing this. Today, I've got on the Primark contour that I mentioned last week, or the week before, whenever it was I made this video, a lot of that. And then I've also got, I think, this color, which is dripping um, of the uh, Hydromaniac. I feel like there hasn't been anything from Urban Decay that's really caught my eye in a while. But I saw this on social media when it first was released and I was like, oh, and then it arrived in the post, which was very exciting. So these are the three colours that I have. I don't know if there are other colours that are available, but I've got, um, let me see which, that is like the super bright pink, isn't it? That's dripping. Um, this one is unhinged and this one is wrecked. So just to sheer them out. They are gorgeous, kind of like sheer watercolory type blush gels. I'll tell you what they remind me of. Oh, I love them. They remind me of, I've got this um, watercolor blush from um, Elizabeth Arden from a million years ago and it's a very, very similar formula. I don't think they still make that, but it was like in a, it was in a pot that was like, had like a mesh top. It's so, so similar. The texture is so similar. Also a little bit, I mean, this is more gel, a little more sticky. It's not, it's not really sticky, but just kind of like, you know, just a, a touch, touch, touch stickier. Um, like it, it doesn't run. It's more of a gel uh, than the watercolor blush from Daniel Sandler. This is like that but a little bit easier to work with because it doesn't run. That is like, you, you it's, it's water. You drop it out onto your hand and it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's everywhere. Whereas this, you can at least, I can squeeze a teeny drop onto my cheek and blend it out. It also packs a real punch. So these are small, um, but I feel like this is gonna last forever. I don't know if it's supposed to be lip and cheek. I don't think it is. I'm gonna have to try it out though. But the, I had to mention these because even if I was just doing like maybe mascara, a little bit of this. These are gonna be my new favorite blushes. I know you will hear me talk about them again. Um, did I have anything else makeup wise I wanted to talk about? I don't think I did. I have one other beauty related product. It is the Lee Stafford Coco Loco Texturizing Dry Shampoo. So I have always been, it's like Batiste or nothing. And then I discovered it wasn't this. It was the Lee Stafford Clean. Is it called Clean On Me? Or is that 
a soap and glory thing. I think that's a soap and glory thing. It was something like clean. It was a pink, clean, dry shampoo that was discontinued. It was very upsetting time. I bought as many as I could find and now I have none. Um, and then they brought out the Coco Loco and I was like, ah, oh, it's pink, but it's not going to be the same. It's not the same, but it's my next favourite. Do you know what? I'm going to Google this now because I bought, again, I bought lots of them at the time. I'm going to Google because watch this be also discontinued. Not having a good time. Lee Stafford. <laughs> it's going to be, isn't it? Coco Loco Dry Shampoo. Oh no, oh no, no, wait. I think it might have been repackaged. Because I was like, every time I recommend something, it gets discontinued. It's like, I'm cursed. No, okay. It's been repackaged. It looks a little bit different to this now because I was just thinking, I bought like four tins of it. What are the chances? It's pretty high. Um, there's something about this that I think it has in common with that original Lee Stafford clean shampoo that I loved. It's, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of stuff in your hair. Like you put it in and then you really work it in and it, it doesn't feel like your hair's been washed, but you also don't feel like it's been kind of weighed down with a load of stuff. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of powder in your hair. It doesn't feel hairspray. And especially with it being a texturizing dry shampoo, which usually I'd shy away from, it doesn't feel like the stuff in your hair. It doesn't feel like, ugh, you know? Um, it just feels kind of freshened and light still. I suppose that's maybe something about the texturizing thing. Sometimes when you use dry shampoo, it feels like almost heavier. Whereas this adds some volume to your roots, but it doesn't add weight. That's, that's the real key. Anyway, since you can still purchase this, I will link it for you below. Would highly recommend. Um, okay, I made some notes. So I would uh, not forget to tell you some of the other things that I've been enjoying. Oh, I was totally gonna forget this. I meant to mention this last time. And weirdly, I had three people DM me on Instagram to ask me about it after the fact. So these earrings, also I've got like this bit of hair that I feel like could do with. It's just like sticking up. Can we like make it be one with the rest of its friends? Probably not. So these earrings, until earlier this year, I had zero ear piercings. Oh, was it last year? It might have been last year. I can't remember. Um, Cause I had some situations with my ears as a kid. I had them pierced so many times. Then I had like keyload scars on the back of my ears. And I always wanted to have them re-pierced, but I thought I'm gonna have to go to someone proper and have it done with a needle. I did, I went and I was like, put on my big girl pants and I had my ears pierced properly again with a needle. I had the first two and then earlier this year I had the third. And um, all I wanted was like three little hoops. And these three little hoops came in a set from Amazon. I think they were like 12 99 They are the little, three little hoops of dreams. Hoop dreams, that's what I had. I had hoop dreams and I love them so much. I will leave them linked below. They were super cheap and all of the earrings that I wear almost exclusively are from Amazon. They are sterling silver coated with, I don't know, something gold looking. It's not gonna be gold, is it? 12 99 it's definitely not gold. But I don't have any irritation from them whatsoever and um, I never take them out. I just leave them in all the time. So I don't know what else to tell you. I, I have worn earrings that are like, costume jewellery that have been really irritating to my ears, which was surprising because I'm not particularly sensitive in that way. But I can tell you everything I've bought from Amazon that's been like sterling silver, but gold, I haven't had a problem with. I leave them in, I shower in them. I would, you know, go swimming, whatever, no issues whatsoever. And I've left some of them in for like months and months and months with no problem. So I will leave these and the other little gold hoops that I wear I have the silver ones, the gold ones, and now this little kind of trio. Um, I'll leave them all linked for you below because can't recommend them enough. I'll zoom back out because that was a bit much. Um, right, if I refer to my notes, the first thing at the top of my list is Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow, I have been really enjoying Cheryl Crow this week. I don't know a lot about Cheryl Crow. In fact, in the car earlier today, I thought I must Google this before I make the video. I didn't Google it, so I'm just gonna wing it. I feel like Cheryl Crow is like a, an upbeat California version of Alanis Morissette. Obviously I knew who Cheryl Crow was. I know like the, the, the hits, 
but I hadn't ever really listened to like albums and I don't know what it was something came on um on like a shuffle the other day and I was like I'm gonna listen to some more Sean Crow because she's kind of got like a she's like a grungy country song country singer like a hippie country singer from California that's kind of the vibe I have no idea who she is in reality I <laughs> don't know where she's from that's just the vibe I get um and I loved Alanis Morissette in my youth I was very much like that, um, I, it's not alternative, I was like a uh, popular alternative, you know, like mainstream alternative, like Papa Roach and Linkin Park and stuff like that, loved, loved, I had my um, goth phase, uh, so well, Alanis Morissette fit really nicely in with that, like as a, a prelude, um, but I never really got into Sheryl Crow, and now really enjoying it. Past couple of weeks I've been listening to her in the car. Really, I want to say upbeat, but kind of uplifting is the word I'm looking for. Really enjoying it. And it's kind of nostalgic, but nostalgic in a way that's like I, I enjoy it, but I don't know it enough to be like singing along. I know the choruses, but I don't know the rest of the songs. It's like rediscovering something that I know a little bit of. I don't know how to describe that. Maybe there's a word. It's probably a German word for that. Um, but Sheryl Crow. Just putting it out there. Put on a greatest hits. You might be surprised how much you love it. Stardew Valley. So I mentioned in the previous one I was really enjoying Wildflowers. Um, I haven't really gone back to that since I made that video. <laughs> I will. I will. Because I was really loving it. But I really only enjoyed playing that on the TV. And it's kind of antisocial. And then I was just had no time at all especially when I was on my own if I was on my own I was doing something I was busy um I also feel like if I'm not doing something standing up actively actively doing something I've just been asleep my friend Karen who I have the business with um she'll message me and then like an hour later she'll message me like are you asleep again <laughs> because I'll just be like absolutely maxed out I'll get up at like six o'clock in the morning be absolutely maxed out and then come pick up time from school and we get home at like half past three and then I'm like <laughs> I fall asleep till like six it's crazy um so yeah I just any kind of amount of time where I could have had the tv to be playing that game I just it was a no uh so once I actually had a little bit of downtime in the evenings again I was playing on my switch and Stardew Valley has been my game of choice that has been my like escapism game I love it I really love it I started playing it on my uh, gaming channel and um, I think that was a mistake because I was I was playing along while I was filming and you can't really get into a game that way. It wasn't a great introduction. It wasn't a great way to play the game for the first time. I probably would do that now. Now I know a little bit of something but really I wanted to kind of immerse myself in the game and just be able to play and play and play and now I've done that I, I can totally see why it's been as popular as it has. So Stardew Valley if you're looking for another kind of farming sim, I'm sure you already are aware of it. If you're like Animal Crossing, Dreamlight Valley, all of the like main players that are popular right now, I'm sure you're already aware of Stardew Valley, but maybe you want and maybe you want something a little bit retro to play. It is a farming simulator. Um, mm, that's that's doing it a, a disservice to say it's a farming simulator, but in the in the gaming community, it would be called a farming sim. So the general premise is you have a farm, you um, grow crops, but there's so much more to it. There's like a storyline where you're having to um, like move that along, that plot along. The seasons that you have to work within, there's relationships within the town, um, there's kind of like a wizard and there's like a magical element. It's awesome. And it's also a complete, what I would call time waster game in that you can just sit and endlessly play, which is fantastic. Uh, TV-wise, I mean, I have been watching Grey's Anatomy again. I'm on season eight um, for my third full rewatch. I'm on season eight. Uh, but I watch that while I'm working, almost exclusively. I like, while I'm working, those of you with ADHD, undiagnosed or otherwise, may appreciate this. While I'm working, I like to have something on, whether it be a book or a TV show, something that I already know what's happening, I already know what's going to happen. It's like white noise... I saw something the other day that said something like, I need to be um, distracted just to the point of not being distracted. And that is exactly perfect. If I had silence, it would not work. I just have that on in the background. Have I said exactly this before? I think I have. Anyway, 
Grey's Anatomy of my work programme and my when I have time to watch TV by myself programme, it's been Mrs Maisel. I've watched it all before. I'm on my final season rewatch. It's such a great show. If you like the Gilmore Girls, it's by the same people. It's created by the same people. It's got that like peppy, I feel like I've said all these things before. Did I talk about this last time? I don't know. I feel like I repeat myself again and again. But just in case. It's by the same people as the Gilmore Girls. It's very fast talking and um, the same kind of vibe. But just so much better. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's nothing like the Gilmore Girls. It's actually about a comedian. I think it's kind of based on Joan Rivers. There are characters in it that were real characters. And most of them are based on people who lived. Um, So the general premise is it's this woman in the 60s whose husband leaves her and she becomes a comic. Um, And that obviously is not okay to do back in the 60s. Even to kind of be a working woman was um, a bit not the dumb thing. Um, But the whole way through the entire entire series, the, the main thread is women challenging perceptions and challenging boundaries and that women can do more than men think that they can do. It's so, so fantastically well done. The, the sets, the, the I want to say cinematography, but that would be a word that I don't know if I'm misusing. Like the way the shots are put together. There are shots that they do that's like all one shot and you just can't help but be so impressed. <laughs> um, the costumes, everything, everything about it is super retro. And then the final season, which I only actually watched this year, and then I decided to want to watch the whole thing again. It's just so well done. The relationship with her father. Oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. If you've not watched Mrs. Maisel, it's on Prime. Um, and then finally, uh, the book I'm listening to this week is The Thursday Murder Club. I think it's the fourth. It is, let me tell you what it's called. The Last Devil to Die. Um, I'm on chapter 66. I've got three hours left. If you've never listened to this, it's Richard Osman. Um, I think it's the fourth one that I'm listening to. And um, it's, a, it's a bit of an odd one. One that if you maybe read the synopsis, you might think, that's eh, not for me. It is about a group of elderly people who are in a retirement village who accidentally originally come together and solve a crime, solve a murder. Um, one of them is like an ex-spy. And they've all got like different different life experiences that help them in this quest and they obviously become friends and uh we're in the fourth book now so it becomes a thing they become friends with some police officers and some unsavory characters that help them and at this point I love it because I don't have to get to know any of the characters when they talk about someone I'm like I have that person in my mind I don't have to be like oh I'm trying to keep track of who's who I love a series and if he keeps writing these books, I will keep listening to them for that reason. Um, but it's a really good, like, alternative crime series because it is older pe- older English people. Um, she's a really, really clever idea for a series. Um, and if you enjoy crime, you might enjoy this. Anyway, that's it for this week. Man, that was a ramble. Man, oh man. I mean, if you got through the first... 10 minutes of me rambling through god knows what the charlotte tilbury thing i need to like i need to make like a a video before i make the video to get out all of my rambles and then become a little bit more succinct um tomorrow i've got the day off so i'm so excited about that a friday off uh so i'm hoping to film a little chatty get ready with me i want to finally film the video where i show you how to do the big voluminous hair that i was doing the other day that i meant to do like two weeks ago but again time escaped me Uh, I'm finally going to edit some vlogs that I've filmed but not put together and I have a Primark haul. Again, I haven't done for you yet so I have have videos coming. I've just not, I can't even tell you I haven't made the time because I've said this before, if you want to do something you can make the time but I have actually had to just prioritise sleep. There was a point last week where I thought I'm never going to get a full night's sleep ever again. I just wasn't sleeping and then when I could sleep, I couldn't sleep because I had to be up early for things. Um, like our market stall, I had to be up early to do something for someone's birthday on Monday. Then Tuesday, I had to take Ella to the um, train station. I was like, <laughs> I'll never sleep again. So tomorrow, Friday, as you're watching this, 
uh, I will hopefully have had a really nice lie-in because I'd already booked the day off, Friday the 13th. It felt like the day to book off, off work. It just did. Um, and as luck would have it, Milo's off school. So nice coincidence. It means that I can have a lie-in. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I will leave everything I can linked for you below. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.